Want to know why? Ask how. Howard, the humongous. The accusation has been made that I am a climate change denier. This is an interesting concept. In fact, I am a climate change amplifier. Why? Because I am trying to tell those who will listen that climate change is an, an inevitable part of this planet. Look, this planet began as a rocky little ball swallowing other balls that were smaller in size. It was a place splattered like a pudding when you hit it with a tablespoon over and over again by those incoming bodies that had lost in the gravitational battles. This was a place so rocky, so unsteady, so earthquaked that you can't believe it. And what's worse, the planet would initially form 4.5 billion years ago had a peculiar characteristic that devastated whatever little climate there was. The planet swiveled around its axis once every six hours. For three hours, if you were sitting in one spot on the planet, assuming that you weren't jolted out of your seat by an earthquake um, or swallowed or smashed by an asteroid, every three hours, for three hours, you were in bright sunlight. You were in intense heat. For the next three hours, you were in a total sunlight deprivation. You were in utter darkness. The temperature shot up and down 86 degrees at a time every three hours. This is a planet of radical climate change. We take the climate changes of day and night for granted. We shouldn't. They are dramatic climate changes. We take the climate changes of summer, winter, fall, and spring for granted. We shouldn't. They are radical climate changes. But they are nothing compared to the 60 ice ages that have hit us since we fashioned our first stone tools 2.5 million years ago. Day and night are nothing compared to the massive 20 massive global warmings that have occurred in 120,000 years since we became modern humans. What does all this mean for climate change denial or for climate change activists? It means that as much carbon dioxide and greenhouse gases as you may suck out of the atmosphere, some massive climate change is going to hit us one way or the other. It's the way of this planet. Look, the sun has gone up 43 degrees or 43 percent in intensity since this planet began. All things are in a state of change on this little pebble of stone. This pebble of stone is not friendly to life. It's hostile to life. It's life itself that re-sculpts it to make it friendly. It's life itself that creates such things as soil, that creates such things as photosynthesis and manages to suck up sunlight and turn it into energy and into physical things. We, what are we in all of this picture? If plants could invent photosynthesis and take a former poison, radiation, and turn it into the stuff of greenery, our job is to go far beyond what plants have achieved. Our job is to do what we've been doing for 2.5 million years. When the climate changed, we found ways to overcome it. Um, when the ice ages came, we made clothes from animal furs. When those ice ages hit, we migrated and lived on the edges of the glaciers. We built our own forms of protection. Um, we built tents. Uh, eventually, we, in fact, we built large structures out of mammoth bone tusks, mammoth tusks and mammoth ribs, and covered them with mammoth hides, and housed as many as seven families in one of these dwellings. We dis discovered how to tame a catastrophe, fire approximately 800,000 to a million years ago. We've been keeping ourselves warm ever since. Some brave souls among us human beings even trudged off to the Arctic, where life looks absolutely impossible, and turned it into their own peculiar form of paradise by learning how to hunt world walruses, by learning how to make extraordinarily warm clothes, by learning how to make igloos that have strange thermodynamic properties that allow them to capture the heat, is taking greenhouse gases out of the atmosphere going to save us? No, it will not stabilize the climate. Will it help us learn how to engineer the climate? Perhaps, and if so, we should do it. But we should know that we will have to learn many other tricks in order to make the climate friendly for the kind of life that we particularly like to have on this planet. We may have to invent ways not just to avoid global warming, but to avoid global cooling. 
to avoid the next ice age. But frankly, adapting to change and inventing new ways to get beyond it is exactly what nature has put life through for the last 3.85 billion years. It's why life has been such an inventive part of the evolutionary process of this universe. And furthering that evolution, furthering nature's creativity, is the job of people like you and me. This is Howard the Humongous speaking to you from the future that it's your job and my job to make. Want to know why? Ask how. Now to find the off button. There.